Hi friends, welcome back to the sesh. It is your only host today, Janelle. Well, and Charlie's here as well, but he's like half asleep and pretty useless, so excuse him. But welcome back, you guys. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Um, honestly, I'll just be straight up. We were about to cancel this episode. Um, Kendall and I have been both going through some tough things in our personal lives, um, especially Ken, and that's why she's not here. Um, she'll probably share eventually what's going on, but as of now, just please send her good thoughts, send her love, send her prayers, manifestation, whatever, good juju, whatever it is, but she'll be back. She's okay. She is okay. Um, I don't want anyone to like worry about her, but yeah, she's just going through some stuff, um, personally, but she will probably open up eventually about that. But anyways, I still wanted to hop on and do a little sesh for you guys because I love hanging out with you guys and I don't know. I didn't want to miss a week. So we're here. Curly's here with me. Ooh, it's just us two today. It's just us two. Ooh. It's a party, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, we're recording this on a Friday. So kind of a last minute thing. And yeah, hopefully you guys all had a wonderful Halloween. Uh, I got a total of like mm, five trick or treaters. That was really depressing, honestly. Like no one came to my house. That's insane. I feel like I feel like kids don't just don't trick or treat anymore. I was right? so confused. No one came to my literally like five people and came live, to my house. And you live like in like in a, in a yeah, neighborhood. Like, I live, you live in a neighborhood. In a neighborhood. With yeah, lots of houses and, and lots of kids. Lots of kids. Yeah. It was very bizarre. No one fucking came to my house and we had so much candy. Like, oh my God. By the second person, I was like, okay, no one's going to come. So I kept telling the kids, I was like, take like tons of handfuls of candy. <laughs> and this one time, this kid, he like took a few pieces. I was like, no, 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 you need to take more. So I just started grabbing handfuls and putting it in his bag. And he was like, sweet, sweet, sweet. And his mom was like waiting <laughs> back on the sidewalk. And I could hear her be like, okay, that's enough. And I was like, hey, mom, just let the kid have his candy. This okay? is Halloween. It's Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I used to love, oh, it was so fun. Like nothing was more satisfying than going home after and like dumping out your bag and like doing a whole inventory. And, yeah, and like and like separating them and putting like all the shitty ones yeah, to the left. Getting, mm-hmm, and, yep, mm-hmm. Exactly. And my brother back in the day hated candy, like hated any kind of candy. He, did, he did, had no interest in it, but he loved going trick-or-treating because it was fun. So I got all of his candy. Oh, so I got double you. candy. Lucky yeah. you. Yeah, no, my brother, <laughs> Sorry, my brother was a... Oh, sweet tooth sweet tooth oh he had the worst really? oh my god he had the he was so bad like with with candy back then like he would go ham with it and like my mom would she, we would like literally have to hide it from him really? and like yeah we would have to like literally like hide it <laughs> in like a like in a high cabinet where oh he had god. no like he could not reach it it was bad he still likes candy i do too but <laughs> oh god i love candy i i have a sweet tooth i like oh, me to too. joke that i don't have a sweet tooth i have sweet teeth <laughs> i have an addiction to sugar uh, but anyways, yeah, more candy for me, I guess. Um, not that I really need it because I eat enough sugar as it is. Isn't it crazy how like in Colorado specifically, I don't know if it was the same for you, but um, going to going trick or treating, you would have to like layer up so much, right? Because it was oh, so yeah. cold out here and it would always like snow either yep. right before Halloween, during Halloween. Yep. Like you were lucky if you got a non-white Halloween. You know yes. what I mean? It was and it's now it's like. We haven't even had our first snowfall and it's no, it's so weird for Colorado. I was literally just talking to John about that like two days ago. I was like, it's so bizarre. It's what is it? November it's November 5th? Yeah, yeah, November 5th. And it has not snowed. Um, it snowed in the mountains, but it hasn't snowed in Denver at, at all. all yet. At well, all. Um, the other day, I think it was on like Wednesday or Tuesday. Um, there was like a little bit of of a flutter like frost or something. Um, it, it did, Adam sent me a, like a video of it at, oh. at his work and it was just like itty bitty little snowfalls normally but it we was get like something by now oh yeah normally we have at least a snow like at least a few inches yeah, by now exactly yeah it's so bizarre global warming is such a thing our fall has been so warm so warm it's, it's really weird but and it's yeah like, it's like it's nice but thinking yeah, about it's like it nice until you're like uh, oh fuck uh, <laughs> except for this should not be happening <laughs> why oh. is it 60 degrees in november yeah oh yeah it's supposed to be in like the night it's like really nice this weekend it's supposed to be in the 70s like high 70s this weekend which i'm like sick but then also i'm like what the fuck <laughs> where's the snow <laughs> like why is it so warm yeah dude back in the day it was all about trying to fit your costume over your jacket yeah like, and like that was what you would have to do <laughs> i don't know if like for us sometimes we even had like a little snowsuit that we had to put like mm-hmm. underneath and then we had like i was i remember being dorothy one year and i loved my, like i love my costume um i think my grandma made it for me or something and um i <laughs> it didn't fit me with my with my with my winter clothes oh 
<laughs> so I was a little cold that day. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was watching some of the kids like coming to my door. They were wearing like no jacket. Granted, it was only like four, like low 40. So it wasn't that cold. Um, but yeah, it was dry. These kids these days have it easy. Back yeah. in my day, I was walking through the snow and cold. God, I remember so many Halloween's. It was just like wet, and drizzly, and yeah. fucking freezing. And freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally remember that. And like my mom's like, what my mom would do is she, when it was very cold like that, she would tell us we can go to the rich block. Oh, and, hell yeah. <laughs> and get the full size candy bars. And then that was it for the night because it was too cold. And like, honestly, I was absolutely, I hate the cold so much. Oh, I hate the cold. Yeah. No, no, no. not for me. Not for me either. <laughs> But anyways, hope you guys all had a good week. Um, right off at the top of the show, I have something that I wanted to bring up. So if you guys follow me on social media or maybe you saw in the community tab on uh, the Sesh page on YouTube, um, my doggos are entered in a calendar contest. One of them being this little beach right here. Charles, say hi. He, doesn't, he literally doesn't care Aww. about anything. He's, he's very tired. Um, but anyways, so my dog, Charlie, and then my other dog, Maggie, and then it's actually my one of my mom's dogs, Lila. Um, they all came from this wonderful organization known as Breeder Release, Breeder Release Adoption Service. And they are based in Southern Colorado. Um, they also have, I believe, some foster. Um, they do some foster work and stuff down in Arizona. Um, but they, they adopt out anywhere nationwide. You would just need to travel to them. Um, but anyways, every year they have a calendar contest where little doggos who have been adopted in the past can enter and they put them in a calendar and it's very, very cute. So anyways, I submitted our three doggos um, in our calendar for the calendar this year. I'll put a picture on the screen, but if you're listening, it's basically my three dogs on a bed with the sign in the background that says, I love bras because it's breeder release adoption service. So that's kind of their... Nickname is bras. Um, and then there's a bunch of little bras on the bed because my mom and I thought it'd be a funny play on words. So anyways, um, we entered them. And if you would like to vote for them, I would really appreciate it. I'll leave a link down below. It's a direct link on Facebook. All you have to do is like the picture. Um, definitely check out the other doggos. I think they have like 170 some um, submissions this year. So they're all very sweet and they all have their cute little stories. But I just wanted to throw that out there. If you have a second, go vote for my pups. The voting ends on Tuesday the 9th. Um, so by the time this goes up, you'll only have a few more days to vote. But if you have a second and you want to vote for my dogs, they'd really appreciate it. Charlie would really appreciate it. He you says, shout out to all my Sesh fans. Jeez, Beesh, you can't even lift your head. Beesh, Beesh, say hello. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> very handsome. Um, but yeah, if you are for some reason in the market for adopting a dog, I highly suggest checking out this organization. They are amazing. They specialize in, um, saving dogs from puppy mills. And if you know anything about puppy mills, they're literally the worst places in the world. The, the conditions that these dogs live in, the abuse that they go through, the neglect that they experience is so devastating. And they, go into the worst places and um, take all the dogs, a lot of them being older who have, you know, been used as breeders. Charlie was uh, in, a, in a breeding facility for six and a half years before I got him. So he's got thousands of little kids and little grandkids running around. Oh my gosh, Charlie. Oh, no, he's a grandpa. <laughs> he's a grandpa, grandpa Char. Oh. Um, a lot of them are very like special needs. Um, and, you know, it does take some time for sure for them to warm up to you. Um, but it is the most rewarding thing seeing a dog that is so scared and has never touched grass in their life and never sat on a bed, never gotten treat. Um, just to be the one that's, you know, showing them what real love is and what it's like to be a pet. It is really the most rewarding experience, but I will tell you off the bat, it is hard. It's not like you just picking up a little puppy and they're your best friend right, right away. You really have to be patient with them and work with them. But, um, it is definitely the most rewarding thing, in my opinion. So I'll leave their website um, down below as well. If you are interested in checking them out or donating or just liking the picture, that would mean a lot to me. I'd really appreciate it. If you know me, I love you know that I love my dogs more than fucking anything in the entire world. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I love my dogs. I need to get a life. Um, so. It's crazy how much Charlie has grown in like the last like 
almost a year that I've known him. Really? Yeah. I remember like one of the first times meeting him, he would literally like scurry away with his little oh, tail between yep. his legs. No. Now he comes into the office tail wagon. I He's know, all happy he, like, to see around. Every- it's yes. so cute. It's I bring so him to the cute. office and he likes to visit the different, he likes to visit Corelli and visit Joel and walk around and get, he gets little snacks from people, little treats. Um, he still doesn't let people really, you know, handle him or, or touch him that that's much okay. but that's okay he has made a ton of progress oh, i would yeah. say that he was probably one of the most severe cases that i've ever seen um and yeah he's such a sweet boy no Love but him so much. it really is incredible like seeing how much you've worked with him and how mm. and how 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 loved he is now because i know hmm, charlie he, little Char- I, I love charlie so much I he reminds know. me so much of my rambo oh. like so so much and oh <laughs> and i've rescued him too and like he, i mean he was nowhere as as severe as, as Charlie's anxiety, yeah. but just rescuing a a dog who's already older, yeah, and uh, like you just give him a second chance at life, you know yep. what I mean? And it's so, uh, they, it they, is so they, rewarding. They love you so much, and they they do look up to you so like you are Charlie's god. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really do. But he gazes into my eyes like I'm I'm like Jesus <laughs> myself. <laughs> No, but yeah, rescuing a dog is one of the most rewarding experiences. And November is, I think, um, like National Rescue a Senior Dog Month or something like that. Aww. So the senior doggos especially need love. They get overlooked, but they are so sweet and they deserve love. They have so much love to give. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. Dogs are amazing. I mean, for animals in general, just living their whole lives in abuse and seeing humans treat them so poorly, the fact that they're able to come back around and, and still show love and, and want to be loved by humans is miraculous. Humans don't deserve dogs. No, absolutely. <laughs> Most of them, at least. Most of them, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. I just wanted to shout that out real quick. Go give them a like and also check out all the other submissions. They're very cute. And then once they do make the calendars, I'll... um put the link below if you you know want to order one it's a donation essentially uh and they're really cute for 2022 obviously so i want to get yeah. one oh, oh i'll get you one don't worry <laughs> it'll happen um but anyways next on my little list um let's see this week this week was interesting mm. um i ha i want to talk about the importance of women's health and being aware of your body and any changes in your body and taking the steps to get checked out if needed um if you you know find something that's concerning or not normal to you um last saturday i was at a concert by then doing my thing it was a great night i got home I went to sleep and then in the middle of the night I was I sleep a lot of the times with like one of my arms up and I like stretch out I don't know it's really comfortable but anyways I was sleeping with my left arm over my head kind of and with my right hand I was just kind of like I was like half asleep I barely even remember it but I remember kind of like like touching my body with my right hand and then I like kind of grazed over my left breast and I felt a little lump and immediately was like what in the fuck is that um freaked out tried to go back to sleep i was like trying to ignore it you know the typical like no no, no it's nothing it's nothing just ignore it just ignore it so i was ignoring it and then i woke up the next day and like was like maybe it was just like some tissue or something in there but i felt it it was definitely there was definitely a little lump um so started panicking i have severe anxiety so um I always think of the worst case scenario pretty much with anything in my life. I have catastrophic thinking, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. <laughs> Health anxiety, just general anxiety. Um, yeah. All anxieties are just awful. All <laughs> social anxiety, yeah. yeah. If you have anxiety, you know. it's It sucks so bad. And it sucks because it's so common. And the word anxiety is thrown around so much that I feel like it almost kind of loses its meaning or value. Its, yeah, exactly. Everyone's like, oh, it's high of anxiety. I have anxiety. And, you know, a lot of people do. Um, and everybody, everybody experience anxiety. Like that is a normal feeling that ev- like every human feels. Right. But it's when some it's, people who have like a disorder, that's something that's like a chemical imbalance in yeah. your brain. And, you know, or it's every, like taking yeah. over to the point where it's interfering with your day to day life yes. or it's, you know, inter- it's t- taking over your mind. So anyways, um, yeah, I was kind of freaked out, um, but I kind of just kept myself and was just like maybe it'll just go away maybe it's just in my head whatever um and then come monday i was like 
it was still there, this little lump. I was kind of freaked out. So I told John about it. And then he was like, you should go to the doctor then. And I was like, no, I don't want to go to the doctor because I'm scared of the doctor. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, if I go to the doctor, it'll become real. Like, mm-hmm. the, what if they find, you know, it'll become real if I go to the doctor. And I don't want to go to the doctor. And he was like, you know, that would be very silly for you not to go to the doctor. If for some reason it was something and it needed to be looked at, you should go sooner than later. And I was like, fuck, you're right. I didn't have anything back to say back to that. Because I, I, like, I mean, that's, I mean, what do you have back to say? Because nah, that's the truth. It like, was the truth. And it, I was yeah, like, yeah, Damn just, it. yeah, yeah. So I hearing that, that from him, I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, you're right. So anyways, uh, then on Tuesday, I called up the doc, my OBGYN, and I told him what was going on and told him I would like to get in. Um, and I couldn't get in until next Thursday. Um, and so I was like, all right, whatever, I'll take that appointment. And by then I was still going to have to wait like eight days for my appointment. And I knew that the next eight days would suck because again, anxiety, I was, I was already thinking about it literally constantly as soon as I felt the lump. So I knew that for the next eight days it would suck. Um, so then I called my mom and I was crying to her and telling her all my scary thoughts. And she was like, I think you should call back because I I mentioned that I only wanted to see a female doc. Um, cause I, I used to work at this doctor's office and so I know all the doctors there and I didn't want to meet with a male that like I also worked with and like, I don't know, it was just like a little weird for me personally. So I wanted to see a female doc, but I couldn't get in until next Thursday. So she actually said that I should call and see if there's anything sooner because she knows that for the next eight days I would be freaking out. So anyways, she actually ended up calling. She's on my hip she because I was in the middle of a panic attack and she was like, okay, I'm going to call for you because you you need to get in earlier. So she called and lucky enough, there was a doctor who was a male, but he just started working there. So I uh, had no like relationship to him in the past. Um, and he was able to get me in yesterday, which is Thursday. This was on Wednesday when I was freaking out to my mom. So it was the next day. Um, and yeah, so I went in, my mom went with me. Thank you, mom. Like, I don't know what I would do without you. And shout out mom. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my God. She is amazing. I am so grateful that she was there with me. And she was like, I'm confident it's nothing. She's like, I know. She's like, mother's no best. She's like, I, I know it's nothing. And she told me that in the past when she was in her late twenties or, or early thirties that she had felt something and it ended up just being like a little benign fibroid. And so she was like, you know, I'm, I'm confident that that's what it is. Blah, blah, blah. So yesterday I went in, they did an exam and yeah sure enough he felt the little lump um and he was like you know from what i can tell it's it's non-cancerous you know your your lymph nodes are not swollen and there's no there's nothing coming out of your breast like discharge and um the little lump is moving around which i guess is a good sign so anyways he was like you know i i think it's probably a fibroid or a cyst but you can't tell for sure unless you get some type of scan so he referred me to a place that you know does all those scannings mammograms and everything um interesting fact younger women oftentimes don't get mammograms because younger women's breast tissue is oftentimes very dense um and i guess mammograms don't work as well for younger women so So most of the time it's an ultrasound that they do that is so interesting yeah i had no idea because i really thought that you can get a mammogram done at any time because what it does it, it compresses it your compresses breasts. it yeah but I, I guess you it can yeah i guess it does make sense like if, if i mean that makes sense that like younger people have like tighter skin yeah that, you know yeah and i guess also everyone's breast tissue is different and mine mm-hmm. just happens to be more dense in general which i knew because my doctor told me that a long time ago <laughs> Cause she was like when you do do self breast exams um she's like just be aware that you do have more dense tissue so you know there it's more fibrous there you will feel more things so you know just be on the lookout that that is normal for you and just to be aware of what's not normal for you and that's important to get from your doctor actually because like i mean everybody's breasts are different you know what i mean right so different like not not even they're not even the same you know right 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 right. (laughs) um so yeah it's i think it's super important for you to like talk to your doctor about like what your tissue is like and what your normal is exactly because i mean my normal is not your normal your normal is not my normal normal, so like so yeah it's really important to understand what your baseline is so that you know what to look out for in your own body um but anyways so he referred me to a sally job which i guess i don't know if they're all over the country but they're all over um colorado and they're 
you know, they do mammograms, they do screenings for all bone density screenings. They do tons of different stuff. Is that the Cancer Association? No, that's Susan G. Komen. Oh, wrong Susan. Sally. Oh, Sally. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wait, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had never heard of them, but I guess they're really calling because I was talking to my stepmom. She was like, oh, yeah, I've gone there for scans and whatever. And my mom has gone there. So anyways, I called them up, um, begged for the closest, soonest appointment, because, again, this was Thursday afternoon. And I really did not want to wait through the weekend for next week to get in because I was already panicking. And, and yes, the fact that my doctor was like, you know, this to me does not feel like anything that's concerning. So that was nice to hear, but I was still concerned. Um, So anyways, I called them and they were able to get me in this morning, actually, which is uh, the fifth Friday. Um, So I went in this morning and I uh, had a ultrasound on my left breast um, on specifically that little part that was the little lump. And so they scanned it and they were so wonderful there. Like, uh, I'll tell you right away. Um, It was it's a cyst. It's benign. So thank, thank God. Like I am so, so grateful, um, that I don't have to worry about that and that they were able to get me in. Um, but I will tell you that it was, it was so heartbreaking going in there and seeing, you know, waiting in the little room or whatever and your little gown and seeing all these other women sitting there going in and out of the scan rooms. And you can just feel this like anxiety in the room and you just look at other people and they're looking at you like what are you in for you know and it's just so scary that obviously like not all these women get the same results that I did or the good news that I did um my heart was just breaking for them but the people there were so wonderful the person who was doing this uh the ultrasound was so wonderful like right away she was She was like, I will tell you as soon as I see some, like, as soon as I pull it up, like, I'll start telling you what I see. And she was like, okay. So she was showing, so they could see this little dot. This is a cyst. I can tell it's a cyst because blah, blah, blah. Then she had another person come in and do the scan and they confirmed it was a cyst. And then they brought those results to the radiologist who was like in the back just to confirm it because they give like the official okay. And yep, sure enough, they said it was a cyst. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, I'm just so thankful because... I was like, thank you so much for, you know, talking to me during this. I was like kind of crying and sniffling. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm just so anxious. And she was like, it's okay. You know, this is a scary thing. And I was like, God, your job must be so hard because not every news is, oh yeah, it's just a cyst or a benign fibroid. Like, yeah, you have to break that. Like what happens if they are scanning something and they find something that's really concerning, you know, it's just people out there, if you're, if you're listening and you have that job of somehow breaking bad news to people, or you're in and somehow diagnosing people or scanning people or whatever, I just so much respect to you genuinely so much respect to you. Uh, because that just sounds like such a stressful job dealing with people who are, you know, scared all the time. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even know what else to say. I just feel like thank you guys for doing that job because it does not sound like an easy one at all. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful for doctors and they told me I'm good. It's just a little cyst, but I wanted to bring this up because at least from what I, my experience is like, I never really thought about it because I'm young. I'm in my twenties. Breast cancer, thankfully, knock on wood, doesn't run in my family. Um, and so I, it had never really crossed my mind all that much. Um, and so when I did find this, it was kind of jarring because I wasn't expecting it and it was really freaky. Um, and so I just kind of want to put this out there of like a reminder to check your body, do self breast exams, make sure that you know what is normal for you. And that if you feel like you found something that's not normal or you don't feel normal or something doesn't look right to go get it checked out because it's really important it's scarier not knowing than knowing like because you're right like anxiety gets to you and Mm -hmm. you're spiraling and you're thinking of all the worst case scenarios yep and you going through this is very like eye-opening to me because my family has a really large history of cancer like all different kinds like my grandma had breasts my grandpa my grandpa died of cancer Mm -hmm. i have cousins who have had different kinds and it's it's it is very like eye-opening that it I mean my cousin who got it she's 31 she's really she's really really young and thankfully you know she beat it but um 
it is really scary to think that anybody can get anybody can get at any age Mm -hmm. especially because like it's not something that i've ever really wanted to think about or thought about because it's it's I don't know, like out of sight, out of mind, or like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, if it's, I'm not thinking well, about it, it's not happening, especially right? Especially to someone who does have cancer runs in their family, whether it's breast or whatever it is. Yeah. Because it becomes more real. It's like, it's, it's like so close to home in a yeah, sense. Yeah. And I mean, one thing, um, if anybody's out there and they have a history of it, there is a test that I don't remember the name of the test, but there's a test that, um, people can get done yes. who have, who have a history of, of, of breast cancer specifically, mm-hmm. there's some gene or some hormone yeah, it's like that the M's. I don't even. Know. I don't remember. But, I, but yeah, yeah, like, and that's. I mean, it's it's not obviously like it's not gonna. It doesn't tell you it like if you're gonna have it, but you have a higher chance of having right. it if you have this this hormone or this gene or whatever it yep. is. You know what I mean? Yep. So that is something that I really want to look into because again, I've had I have a, a history of it and. I should I should take care of my body. Like, and the thing that's interesting, I think that's such a wonderful thing that they have these tests because if you do test positive for it, then then it's preventative. You know, like, oh, okay, so you can decide what to do next, whether that's getting scans at a younger age, whether that's deciding to have a uh, mastectomy Mas- or mass mastectomy. mastectomy yeah, yeah, mastectomy or you know, wh- whatever it is um, you decide to do, I think it's it's good to know because then you have options as to how you can try to avoid getting to that stage. Because um, that stage, I mean, that I, I don't wish that upon anybody. Like I've seen it firsthand. It is awful. It is sad for everybody involved, for everyone involved. It's just an awful experience to yeah. go through. And if you guys out there are fighting cancer or know someone who is fighting cancer, my heart goes out to you so deeply yes. um you guys are you you people ugh, you're so strong and i i'm amazed by people who who fight this fight because it is such a scary thing to even think about much less actually go through on your own so i just my heart goes out to people truly you guys are so strong and i'm amazed by by people who go through this mm-hmm. yeah, truly. yeah yeah really so yeah i mean I'm very thankful that I don't have to go through the weekend thinking about this anymore. And oh yeah, I was so freaked out. I was texting you guys and Kendall and, and Sydney and you, and I was just like, oh, and my friends um, back from college and you guys have been also supportive. That's another thing is like having a support system is so makes such a difference. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Makes such a difference. And, and being able to, you know, taught my stepmom has had to have a biopsy and luckily it was fine, but just a lot, of, so many women go through these things. Mm-hmm. Of course, men too, in, in other ways, or, you know, men can get breast cancer as well, but, um, you know, so many people just go through these scary things and it's so wonderful to be able to have people around you that you can go to. Um, and you know, whether that's hearing their experiences or just, you know, getting support, having people go with you. The fact that my mom went with me helped so much, Um, yeah. So just really, really thankful for everyone that was able to kind of help carry me through this week because it was kind of a stressful week. But yeah, I wanted to share that with you all because I think that's really important as a reminder to do yourself exams, um, get your tests done and don't wait if you feel something, even though it's really scary. Um, you know, most of the time it's nothing, but it's always good to know. And also stay the fuck off Google because holy <laughs> shit, dude, Google is the worst place on earth, which I know everyone's like, well, don't get on Google. I'm like, okay, well, I went on Google because I was like trying to do my own research and trying to see if it was like worth going in or whatever. And Google scared the fuck out of it's, me. It makes it so much worse. Oh it my God. So much everything, worse. everything I've like every little symptom I've had, I've looked it up. It's like, oh, you're, you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> it's so scary. I hate Google. Yeah. So you, have, you, have super rare, you have the super rare disease that only yeah. like one in one million people right. get. It's like, thanks, Google. Stay off Google. <laughs> but also, I understand. Like, I probably wouldn't stay off Google. Like, I'm probably still be Googling shit forever. <laughs> We're hypocrites. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, so annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to throw that out there. I'm really thankful that I'm okay. And my heart goes out to anyone who is dealing with something like this. All right, we're going to switch gears here into some spicy topics. We got some tea to jump into, people. Tana Mongoose is off the rails, and we off have some them. shit to talk about. Uh, but before we do, we're going to go ahead and thank our first sponsors for the day. So speaking of women's health, you guys, our first sponsor for the day is the Pill Club. We love the Pill Club around here. It makes getting birth control 
so easy, so seamless. And honestly, everyone needs to be aware of this because it is such a wonderful service. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA-approved brands. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as just $9 per month without insurance. And the Pill Club delivers birth control to your door for free in discreet packaging, which is something I really, really love. There's no worry about, you know, being scared to go into the doctor's office and ask for it or worrying about something saying being delivered to your door that's like birth control on the packaging. It's very discreet. Whether you have been on birth control for years or maybe you've never been on birth control and you're ready to start it or whatever it may be, maybe you want to switch the birth control method that you're on. The Pill Club has it all. They really can help you find the best brand that you want to try and what the best option is. And the whole medical team has your back. Another great thing about the Pill Club is that their licensed medical team is just a text away to get you the best reproductive health care. So it's really, really easy. This is especially useful if you live in a place where it is hard to go to a actual center that can provide birth control for you, or maybe you don't have a way to get there physically, whatever it may be. I really like the service because you can do it in the comfort of your own home. And again, it's delivered right to your door. So skip the office visit and waiting in line at the pharmacy and join the Pill Club. That's another thing, you guys. I hate waiting in line at the pharmacy. It's so annoying. And with Pill Club, you don't have to do that. And right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash sesh, the Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every sesh listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash sesh to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, thepillclub.com slash sesh. You must use this link to make your donation. So I know I just talked about boobies a lot and what better sponsor than Third Love to make sure that your own boobies are nice and comfortable and secure in their bras. It is so important to make sure that you feel comfortable all day long, no matter what life is throwing at you. I feel like there's nothing worse than having a stressful day and then also feeling super uncomfortable in your own clothes. I hate that feeling. And with Third Love, you don't have to worry about that because they make bras and clothes and underwear and loungewear that are so, so comfortable. I personally am not an underwire type of gal. Back in the day I was, but recently I have done away with underwire and Third Love has so many options that don't have underwire. I have one specifically that I really, really love. It's super comfortable, which I'm telling you guys, I am not a broad type of gal, but with Third Love, their stuff is genuinely really comfortable. Also, I have their underwear that I really, really like. Probably my favorite pair of underwear, honestly, like super, super comfortable. Doesn't leave a seam. There's no panty line. It is wonderful. Another thing that I love about Third Love is their fitting room quiz, you guys. It really personalizes your experience to make sure that you have the right size, the right fit of bra, the right type of bra that you want. They they really take account for all different types of shapes and sizes of boobies to make sure that you have a bra that fits you the best. And they even have exclusive half cup sizes. The fitting room quiz has helped 18 million women find their true bra size, and you could be next. So many women are wearing the wrong bra size. It's very, very common, but with Third Love, you can ensure that you are wearing the size that is best for you. They guarantee that you will love your fit, and if not, exchanges and returns are free for 60 days. And Third Love is the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S., partnering with organizations across the United States. Third Love has donated over $40 million worth of bras to help people in need. So feeling is believing. Upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash sesh. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash sesh. All right, and we're back. So like I said, Miss Tana has been stirring the pot per usual, and I'm honestly pretty pissed off at this one. And I know that Kendall would be pissed too. She was like, you need to make sure that you tell them that I'm pissed off too. <laughs> so yeah, it's not great. Um, if you're not aware, Tana is really spreading a ton of misinformation, honestly, about the Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie uh, case. It's really disturbing, and let's get into it. All right. So on October 25th, Tana uploaded a TikTok talking about a conspiracy she believes about Brian Laundrie. And in the TikTok, she says that she genuinely thinks someone staged items that belong to Brian and that the remains were placed so people would think the remains were him. So basically, she's saying the remains that were found 
are not him and she thinks he's like still on the loose and in fact in her tiktok which we'll play in a sec she even said that he she thinks that he's in france eating a uh, croissant living his best life i was like oh god so fucking cringy <laughs> oh my god but anyways okay so she also said that new sources confirmed the remains were actually not Brian's, which is a complete lie. And then she says that it's suspicious that his family decided not to hold a funeral. And again, she believes that he's in Paris eating croissants. She's <laughs> like, oh my God, so stupid. She's so stupid. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm like, like, girl, come on. Ugh. What are you doing? So anyways, uh, the TikTok has over 4 million views and Tana has received a ton of backlash from it. And it's really great. She also says that on Twitter, she thought that Brian Longy pulled a Joe, Joe Goldberg, which I guess is from a, it's a fictional character from the show You, which oh, yeah. I, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's a good show. Um, it's something I was oh, telling you about. Yeah, I was you telling did you about tell this. About that. Yeah. 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 So um, basically, okay. So basically Joe um, kills a bunch of people oh and he runs away and starts a new life. That's basically what she's comparing him to, which it's just so it's, like, you know, this is, insensitive it's just so insensitive to the family it's so insensitive and this is such a huge case that you don't and you have such a giant platform she is so you know influential to people because she has so many eyes on her that you know she's spreading so much information that i feel like a lot of people probably believe whatever the hell that she's saying and you know regardless of the fact that this is a well-known case any case it's so detrimental and unfair specifically to to the family that is gabby's that you know that that she's doing this it's just the whole thing is so toxic okay anyways honestly let's just go ahead and play the tiktok because i want you guys to see it for yourselves the other day i tweeted i know brian laundry is trying to pull a joe goldberg and all of the responses were people would be like why would you make a joke out of this it's so funny. and i said i'm not joking i genuinely think something was placed there so that people would think the remains were him i think his parents showed up to the motherfucking forest with a tooth and a water bottle and whatever else they could find and a letter and a journal and whatever so that that authorities would think he's dead when they know damn well he ain't dead. Why did the parents not start looking until they had to? Because they know their son's not dead. Why were his remains found 24 hours after his parents started searching? Because he's not dead. And today, news sources confirmed that the remains were not him. It is now rumored that the funeral that two people would have attended is going to be called off. Brian Laundrie is pulling a Joe Goldberg. I guarantee you he's in like Paris, France right now, living his best life, getting a croissant. He is alive. And that's the tea. So obviously most of us know that the remains um, that were found at the Carlton, Carlton Reserve on off October 20th um, were confirmed to be Brian's um, through dental records. And um, the thing that's being spread around is that the there's no DNA match and that it was confirmed that he his DNA did not match the DNA found, which is a fucking lie. DNA samples from the remains had not even been sent out for testing on the date that this post was made. The post someone posted essentially that the DNA is not his blah, blah, blah. And that's how this whole thing went viral. So when that's when this whole conspiracy went viral, they hadn't even tested the remains yet. So it's it's so ridiculous. The amount of misinformation that is being spread is unbelievable. And so many people genuinely believe it. It's it's insane. It's insane. I mean, she obviously knows that she's so influential and that like, I mean, obviously people are going to take what she says as fact because they're they're just yeah, a lot blinded people, by her. You know what I mean? As right. By her. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. I know completely. Yeah. This whole this whole thing about his DNA not matching is honestly absurd because it it's, is not that hard to figure out that this is a fucking lie. They hadn't tested it yet. We're waiting for we're waiting for the results. So, um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that that this has happened and Tana needs to get the fuck off of true crime. I think it's just really detrimental that um, this whole case has turned into some type of like entertainment, like crazy story. The amount of TikToks that people are making that are like, you know, kind of comedy based or make, poking fun at the whole thing or, you know, skits of people pretending to be uh, Brian Laundrie's parents walking down a, you know, a dirt road and then throwing the backpack in the corner or whatever. Like imagine put yourself in, in Gabby's parents situation, Gabby's family situation. And, you know, seeing stuff like that after what they have been through is just so heartbreaking and so unfair. And I think that a lot of people forget that because this case has been so like sensationalized and it's so, so viral 
that, you know, at the end of the day, these are still real people that are going through the worst thing that they have ever experienced in their entire lives. And just because it's viral and just because everyone's talking about it and everyone's reporting on it doesn't mean that now all of a sudden we don't need to show empathy towards it or compassion towards it or sensitivity towards it. Um, yeah. And it's really sad to see that Tana is like taking advantage of this opportunity because she's yes. like, she is doing this for the retweets and the clicks and she's doing it for all the wrong reasons. Right. Which, I mean, we can't expect any anything more from her, to be honest. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know how or like how she could like do that with her chest. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like spread this. And so many people yeah. are taking this opportunity to try and make a viral TikTok or try and make a viral tweet or a viral post or whatever the hell it is. And it should not be taken as something to use to your own advantage. I think that that is so disappointing and sick, honestly, um, that people are, are using this as as a way to get their little five minutes of fame or whatever the fuck it is. It's just really disappointing. And then we have people like Kendall who are genuinely trying to make a difference, who donated $50,000 to the family. I mean, that is amazing. So obviously, you know, there's, there's two sides, there's two ends to every spectrum. And it's just disappointing that people are going to do this. But I think, unfortunately, we're probably going to see more of this as time goes on because of social media and the fact that a lot of people, when they do post something so ridiculous or, you know, something that's like an, a, an awe factor, they, they go viral and they get attention for it. Whether it's good attention or bad attention, people are getting attention. So I feel like unless we stop giving those people attention, that is probably just going to keep happening, um, which is really unfortunate, honestly. So I don't know. Tana needs to stop. She just needs to stay out of true crime. <laughs> I don't literally don't know what Stick else to, to say. Stick to story times. Stick to story times. Yeah. Of your own, whatever. It's one <laughs> thing to like make stuff up about your own life and, you know, sensationalize your own experiences. It is another thing to do it to someone else who you don't know. And that's the tea all night. Okay. Moving the fuck right along here. Ace family people. <laughs> oh man. Dude, the Ace family, they make me laugh so hard. Like they're like, the cringe of the internet. They're in. Oh my God. They're fucking crazy. Okay. <laughs> like every single day, I feel like it's something new with these people. Obviously, the Ace family has been flaunting their quote unquote perfect lives now for 19 million YouTube subscribers. That's insane. I can't insane. even believe they have that many subscribers. Who is subscribing to them? <laughs> so many people. Oh, I'm not. I, yeah, no. I refuse. <laughs> used to watch their videos because I don't want to give them any views. It drives me crazy. Uh, but yeah, so if you didn't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know, but it's Austin <laughs> and Catherine are the, um, I guess, husband and wife, even though I've said on other podcasts that I think it's a total setup and that they're not actually married. It's a business and deal. I think it's a business deal. I still think it's a business deal, but they have three kids together, which is sad because that's not a business deal. That's actual lives. But interesting seeing how kids are becoming that unfortunately because like yes. think of like Kourtney Kardashian she has only had kids with with Scott yeah and I saw this conspiracy and I don't know if you want to share this but like I saw this conspiracy that was like um why didn't Kylie have kids with Tyga because they were together for so long Aww. and it was um and then she had ki she had a kid with um Travis, Travis yeah and they were saying be it's because um obviously this is all like Speculative. Uh, speculation total conspiracy theory yeah this is not anything that i even believe i mean maybe a little bit but like it's <laughs> just just a just a theory yeah yeah yeah. um that she had a kid with travis because he's way more successful than than uh tyga ah and that's interesting yeah and like somebody was saying connecting the dots to courtney as well how scott he's he, i mean he scott is famous because of the kardashians right um he doesn't, he's not really known for anything by himself, I guess. Yeah. And Travis Barker is. Like, yeah. He's a very, very, very popular mu musician. Yeah. And like, I honestly think had, had Courtney not been with Scott back then, I think she would have done something similar to like Kylie yeah. and like have a baby with somebody who's successful. Oh. I don't know. That's just my little, that's just my little. That is really interesting. Yeah. Um, side note, it's fucking hilarious that Pete Davidson and fucking Kim <gasps> K are like keep being spotted together. It's Wait, cracking me are up. Are they? Are they? Are they? Yeah. They were just, she just went to uh, Staten Island to have dinner with him. 
And then they were holding hands on that oh. roller coaster and they kissed during that SNL skit. And I don't know. It's like, oh my God. It's so funny to me. So now I'm like, okay, he and uh, Travis Barker and um, what's Travis his face? Uh, no. And uh, Machine Gun Kelly, which I know he doesn't have anything <laughs> to do with the Kardashians, but all these like famous women Goofy looking guys are now dating like these tall white skinny dudes and i'm like is that what's in now is like the tall skinny dudes white dudes i don't know it's so funny to me oh god the memes of kim k and p are so funny to me it's cracking me up oh god. you know what still cracks me up to this day i am weed i am weed <laughs> yeah that was the weirdest shit god that whole He's an interesting little chap. He's an insane. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, back to what the fuck I was talking about. Uh, Ace family. Okay. So property records have surfaced and show that the Ace family might be in a little bit of a pickle here. So back in May of this year, the property, their property, which is by the way, humongous. It's like they actually took two lots and then bought them both and then built one massive house on this lot and it's fucking crazy i think the house i thought no i thought they had a i thought they they there was two mansions that were separate and then they connected, they connected them yeah so oh. there was two mansions oh, that were right. already like built and made there yeah. and i think they, they bought both properties and then just connected, <laughs> connected them with like them. with what with like a little hallway i don't know <laughs> i don't know it's so yeah the whole thing is so weird but i guess um this was back in 2019 and they bought it for 10.1 million dollars which is a lot of money uh, and then fast forward to October 19th, the home was returned to the bank when they didn't receive any bids at a public foreclosure. And what's sad is that the property was, uh, the starting bid was at $9 million, which is lower than what they paid for. So the house is already underwater, which is just usually what happens when there's a foreclosure. Otherwise you would sell it if you could make money off of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, also, I guess it's noted and I don't know if this is hundred percent true, but I guess the auction requires bidders to put down the total sum of cash, which I think, yeah, if you're going up for auction, you pay cash for the house. I think that's, I think that's like pretty common yeah. for all kinds of auctions. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, this is unrelated completely, but like my dad goes to a lot of like animal auctions and you have to have the money on the spot to pay yeah, for them. Right. So yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you have to have like, you have to like have proof ready. of funds yeah. that you have enough money to buy this house um so <laughs> and just put it on a credit card oh my god that's so much money and that sucks that they spent that much money on a house and it's they're underwater. poor kids dude i know i know Ugh. i feel so bad for them oh it sucks um anyways but the crazy thing is while all this is going around austin and Catherine are totally denying all the shit and like going around like it's completely like their lives are completely fine um on July, I think we actually even read this Austin McBroom post uh, months back or a few weeks back. But anyways, he's basically being like, stop capping on me and my family's name. Ain't nobody getting evicted. Ain't nobody moving, blah, blah, blah. Catherine's out here being like, it's such a blessing. All the false narratives and untrue rumors have been a blessing in disguise. They made me appreciate how blessed I am and get closer to God. I feel so alive. But meanwhile, it's like, you can go online and see for yourself that shit is going down. <laughs> like, like there's like documented, like documented, like legal paperwork yes, saying this. So exactly. I, yeah. It's fucking wild. <laughs> so they're like uploading videos like usual, totally ignoring it. And one of their vlogs, Catherine revealed her new body after doing a mommy makeover, which people were like, oh my God, if your house is going into foreclosure, that means financially you're probably not doing great. Why are you getting a mommy makeover? I feel bad for the fucking kids, Ooh. dude. Cause they got like nothing on and it's sad because the kids are making so much of the content, like yeah. half the or more of the content is, is the kids. Yes. And again, it goes back to that, dis, uh, that, um, talk about the discussion of like child safety and child entertainment. Exactly. When Kendall and I were discussing the whole vlogging thing and, and, you know, accidental uploads or whatever, these kids have no protection. They have no protection. They have no laws. You know, for all we know, they could be losing every cent to their name and the kids will never see a dime that they have made off their kids, which is so sad. And I was going to say, too, it's crazy, too, because I mean, I'm just imagining um, because there's no laws or anything there. The kids names are probably nowhere on any of the documents. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's they're minors and whatever. Yeah. And 
you know, the parents are probably the ones that are literally taking everything that's so sad. I that doubt they so have trust sad. for their kid. Oh, probably I mean, not. Maybe they I mean, do, but I you think know. Austin has trusts? <laughs> yeah, again, I don't fucking know. This is just my own theory, but my guess is that he doesn't have a fucking trust built for his kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's all around really, really bad. So anyways, um, now again, more lawsuits are breaking. These people are getting sued for like fucking everything. They're getting sued up the ass. Up the ass. <laughs> so now Austin's company, Simply Greatest Productions was sued by Live X Live, the company that held the YouTuber versus TikTok fight, which was fucking hilarious. Um, they're asking for $100 million in lawsuits for failure to fulfill contracts, allegedly. Of course, this is all allegedly. Uh, Catherine was sued by TBL Cosmetics, um, a manufacturing company that created and distributed 1212 Gateway, which I guess is her uh, skincare cosmetic company, which I didn't even know she had interesting uh i guess the complaint against her is alleged that mcbroom staged that the company was way more successful than it really was in the effort to stop tbl cosmetics from profiting from 1212 gateway uh, i don't know how that makes sense but that's what that's, that's what, what you yeah. found that's what i found and something weird is going on then and it's really weird because like she i don't remember I, I guess i do remember her like posting about 1212 gateway which first of all weird name it sounds like some kind of like internet security yeah. thing um <laughs> <It does. laughs> um it, she like posted something and it was like whatever like launching her 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 brand or whatever mm -hmm. but then it i don't know if it ever launched i don't know if it ever like saw the I was light gonna say i feel like i haven't heard anything you think that they'd be like promoting, promoting this up the ass let's see makeup company more than just skincare oh she's got a website here people 1212 can you buy things? Okay, let's see. Where is, how do you shop for this shit? The website's pretty. Okay, here we go. Let's see, she's selling some masks for $30, $20. Okay, all right. Uh, so it looks like it's mostly just skincare. Sample sets, what do we got here? Starry Nights Ritual. Okay, your packaging's cute oh, as fuck. I'll give it her that. It is really cute, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, it's really cute. Uh, deep hydration, hydration self-care ritual. Huh. I wonder if it's any good. I wonder if Hiram's done a fucking uh, review on it. Beauty oil. Interesting. I wonder how much she actually like takes part in this or if she just slapped her name on it. You know what it kind of reminds me of a little bit? What? Is uh, Trisha's line. Trisha's oh, skincare line. Yeah, Ooh. that was kind of funny. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, shit. Maybe we should purchase some. Just kidding. Uh, as as she goes, oh. It's skincare for men, skincare for women, skincare for beginners, skincare for everyone. It's a great solution to reinvigorate your daily routine by incorporating a holistic approach to your every morning and night. Huh. A natural ingredient list, simple skincare, blah, blah, blah. This is really interesting because I have literally not heard a single person talk about this. And maybe I'm just not looking in the right places, but even like all the beauty, um, people on youtube and stuff like i haven't heard anyone talking about Even, this or reviewing it or no. uh, or like getting pr packages or anything i remember seeing it on twitter or something where she was like showing her little products you know what i mean oh wow but i yeah i never saw anybody i never saw anybody purchase or review it like you said which is, is so weird yeah i don't know oh she's got a scientist okay so this person <laughs> uh, uh this scientist i wonder who this what the hell is a scientist? That's a very broad term. A say, scientist? Yeah. Just a scientist. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. Huh. I wonder if there's like good ingredients. I wish I knew how to read a fucking ingredient list, but I don't know how to I kind of I kind of want to watch these reviews. <laughs> I know. It's interesting. Let's oh, Hiram did do a video on it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh shit. I need to watch that. Maybe not this year. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Ignore everything that I said. Oh, she's got all the uh like hot words on here like squalene everyone's obsessed with squalene everyone like talks about it i need to try that shit god her packaging is really cute i'll fucking give her that it is some cute ass packaging so now there's another lawsuit filed on october 23rd by the city of beverly hills the city of beverly hills <laughs> are whole suing city. the whole city because <laughs> Oh my God, this is insane. Austin held an unsanctioned gathering of Ace Family Friends for YouTube Takeover Parade. You guys, the footage of this is literally wild. The city is seeking monetary damages of no less than $200,000, according to the complaint filed against Austin. 
So basically what happened is Austin organized and held this giant parade in in uh, Beverly Hills. And I think it went from like Rodeo, Rodeo Drive to Wilshire. Dude, well, so it was like it was a few blocks. But when I was reading uh, the notes here, I, my stupid ass was about to say Rodeo Drive. I know. I was, <laughs> no, seriously, yesterday when I was reading it, I was like, I was like, so why don't people say Rodeo Drive? Rodeo Drive. We don't say ro- let's go down to the Rodeo. <laughs> rodeo Drive. Wow, really shows very high class here. I was literally about to be like, yeah, down the rodeo drive. <laughs> yeah, down the rodeo drive. Stupid. <laughs> Anyways, um, the the clips of this, you guys, are wild. Let's go ahead and play a few. Okay, so as you can tell, um, it's out of control. Like, people are fucking swarming them. They're screaming at them. They're like, tra- it looks dangerous. <laughs> so it's funny because the city knew that this was all happening before it even happened, you know? Yeah. Because obviously it was all over um, social. social being and being promoted, like, yeah. Yeah. And so um, they actually like hired. Oh, yeah. They hired like, there was like that, that number, that list of number that I put, whatever. Um, 40 police officers. Yeah. They had a like army basically. Yes. It was, and they were like in, like in riot gear too. All for the fucking ace family. <laughs> God, it's so cringe. Yeah. And 25 civilian support staff were just patched to the area. So there's like 70 people there. No arrests made. Dude. Yeah. That is wild. He had no fucking preparation for this whatsoever. It, it, it's he had no permits for this. It was done illegally. There was no security. Like literally anything, it could have been, anything could have happened. It could have been really bad. And another thing too, um, when I was watching the like clips from this whole fiasco, yeah, um, was that they only had one security guard, um, with with Austin and Catherine, yeah. and interestingly, the security guard was on Austin's side, and it was literally just Austin like holding Catherine like this, yeah. But like people were like reaching for her, oh, and grabbing yeah. her because like she's Catherine McBroom, you know yeah. what I mean. It's so disgusting that he put her in that situation mm-hmm. where she really could have been hurt or he could have been hurt yep. and they have kids to think about. And yep. it's like, wow, like you really did not think about anything, like nope. any, any kind of security for yourself, for your wife, yep. for your kids. Like nothing. there's, yeah, no, he, no care in the world. Literally nothing. It was chaotic. People were jammed together. Yeah. Like you said, people were trying to grab her. <sighs> it's just, and the whole time they're kind of like laughing, they're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Like they have no, like they seem to have zero concern whatsoever. Yeah. It was <gasps> insane. It's in, like this. People are stupid. Oh my god, <laughs> it was wild. Um. So, anyways, apparently it got so bad at one point that Austin and Catherine hid in a nail salon to get away from the crowd. That's really nice. I'm sure the nail salon was like, oh great, yeah, fucking come here. That's exactly what we need. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, like we said, the city knew about it, and they were like preparing, I guess, on the side. Uh, Austin was also bragging about shutting the city down. Dude, he reminds me of when, um, what the fuck? Was it Logan Paul when he was in Japan and he was like running around creating chaos in the streets? Yeah. And like just without a care in the world. It kind of gives me that same vibe of like, oh, well, I'm so crazy. My fans are wild. Like, I'm so popular. I'm yeah. so popular. I can do whatever they want. I'm going to shut blah. the city down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so terrible. They've never tried to redeem themselves either. You know what I mean? Like, they, no, they don't care. They don't have a care in the world. No. I seriously feel like they have the mindset of like, oh, well, we've been, we've gone this far and we've already made, you know, this image for ourselves. So fuck it. We might as well just go with it just and right really on it. like lean yeah. into it. Yeah. Uh, and then of course with all these people there's bound to be a ton of mess and they didn't even bother to clean it up of course um and then the filing says that the city was forced to clean up the streets of the litter and debris left behind by the unruly gathering here's a few pics here from instagram and li- listen to austin's fucking uh <laughs> caption for those of you who are just audio listeners he goes had to shut the city down before heading to miami 
Thank you to everyone for coming out and celebrating early. Wait till the next parade after I win on June 12th. Don't miss it. June 12th? Is, oh, that was, that was a fight. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I was, was like, wait, what? Yeah, I forgot this happened a while ago. So, yeah, and now they're being sued. Huh. Oh, yeah, because this happened in May, uh, but now they're officially being sued, which I wonder if it'll actually go anywhere. Um, I'm pretty, I feel like the city of Beverly Hills isn't messing around with this. Like, they, like, there was, there's like a huge list of steps that they need to take. They had to have had, um, like insurance for oh, yeah they, there was so like there was literally like four or five steps before they even got the permit absolutely so i feel like the city is going to take it seriously because this was this could have been really really bad god awesome mcbroom just is a fucker i can't <laughs> stand him he drives me crazy and he does such wild shit and he doesn't even give, give a fuck like i thought it was wild when he was riding his stupid uh was it the little water water yeah, bike the jet ski <laughs> yeah. in his pool and was like creating a fucking tsunami for the people for his neighbors below him and like ruining all their crops and shit and he was like oh ha, ha, this is so funny like he just doesn't give a fuck dude this guy is a savage oh he makes me so mad i can't stand him and you know what's, uh, this is going back to the house their house looks so uninviting oh yeah their house is like it, it looks like it, it looks, looks like sad. A jail. It looks sad. Well, like a fancy jail. Okay. Yeah, like a fancy jail. Yeah, I of was telling it's... I was telling Carly before we started recording. I was like, I I love modern design. I think it's beautiful, but their house is like empty. Cold. It's so cold. It's so empty. Like I feel as though they're trying to be the Kardashians with their like minimalist everything white, everything clean. But you have three kids. Yeah, they have three kids. So then I'm wondering, do they? have people that clean up like every single day so that when they vlog their house looks perfect all the time because there's no way their house looks perfect all the time no way if you live in your house with three kids yeah with three <laughs> kids or do they not let their kids play in anywhere except for like specific playrooms or something that's so sad to think about i don't know it's so weird i don't know i really do wonder what goes on behind closed doors when the camera is off yeah i was saying i was saying that <laughs> their house reminds me of like a zen garden but like an unzen garden yeah. because it's it is really pretty like it is a beautiful house can't deny i mean yeah i, I it is like, a beautiful it could home, be it's it cold. Could. Have, so you been, cold have you been there Jenna? i'm kidding no. <laughs> no not like temperature cold but like no yeah the feeling of it it doesn't seem it's, like warm and inviting yeah no not at all it literally feels like it feels i don't know if there's so much like i can like you can like feel the negative energy yeah. by just seeing it just, through the screen i know it's it's bad it's wild. That house is human. Who's going to buy that house? I really want to know. For nine mil. Ugh. Nine mil. Hey, it's cheaper than what they bought it for. That's true. That sucks. They're not making a dime off this. Oh, They're no, losing no, no. money. They're losing hella money on this. <sighs> Which is, that's telling because the market right now is such a seller's market. I mean, houses are so fucking outrageously expensive in Colorado. I'm sure in California, like it always is. All around the country, really, um, the, the housing market's just wild. So the fact that they're losing money on that is not good. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. It really is crazy. We'll see what happens. I really want to know if they're actually going to get in trouble. They'll probably just get a hefty fine is my guess. And then, well, I was going to say, then they'll pay it off. No problem. But I don't know if they have money. I was going to so. say, I feel, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They, 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 they really gave me some like sketchy business vibes. Like, yes, super sketchy business vibes. Cause he's, there are so many. Every time I look him up and like look up his businesses, there's like a new business yes. and under a new name under, you know, what Which, I mean? it's really, really odd to me. And it just is like red flags. It's me. expensive to start up new companies all the yeah. time, new businesses. Like obviously it's you got to pay for a lot of fees. money. In it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So I don't know. Very odd. Uh, uh, McBroom, McBroom, Austin McBroom. He's so annoying. Gotta get that clout. <laughs> dude, the amount of like one liners that guy has oh my god oh my god yeah he looks like Polly d too but like, like a loser version of Polly <laughs> d <laughs> <laughs> oh he drives me crazy i can't stand his ass Ugh. and then how Catherine just like walks around like nothing's wrong she's like oh yeah oh god okay uh, let's take one more uh ad break and then we'll be back to talk about our last spicy topic of the day all right so fall is here and you know what if you missed out on your chance at a summer fling well, why not make it a freaky fall, baby, with Dipsy? If you're interested in exploring things like threesomes, toy play, or edging, but not sure where to start, Dipsy Stories can help you explore all your desires. 
From tie me up to tuck me in, Dipsy Stories is here to close the loop on your bedtime routine or help you create an exciting new one. Dipsy Stories is an app full of sexy audio stories, and now they even have brand new written stories. No matter who you're into or what turns you on, Dipsy helps bring the stories to life anytime, anywhere. Close your eyes and let yourself get lost in a world where only good things happen and pleasure is your only priority. Explore your fantasies in a safe, shame-free way. Genuinely, this is what I love so much about this app is it's so shame-free. It's really empowering. It's not, you know, like you feel like dirty and secretive. It's it's so easy to use. And again, it makes you feel very empowered. There are hundreds of stories to choose from and they release new content every single week. So there's always more to explore. You'll never get tired of the uh, selection they have. And they also have wellness sessions to help you wind down and explore and sleep sessions to help you drift off into a wonderful night's sleep. And they have such a big selection that you can always, you know, change your mind depending on what you're in the mood for. And I guarantee you will find something. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. So guys, I feel like we all have some type of traumatic memory from shaving. Mine personally was one day I was a young chap and I was shaving my legs and I was using a nasty old razor and I went to shave around my ankles and it sliced a big piece of skin off of me. And I'm kid you not, I pulled the entire skin piece of skin out of the razor blade and I will never forget it. I have a scar to this day. Curly's face right now. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, dude, I <laughs> you just scarred me. <laughs> I really did pull a piece of skin out of my razor. And it was because I was using a dusty old crusty razor because I was too lazy to go to the store and buy a new one. But with the Fina Club, you don't have to worry about that anymore because they will send you razor heads fresh every single month. Athena Club's razor is designed with built-in skin guards to help prevent razor burn while being gentle on the curves. The razor blade is surrounded by water-activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, which is the holy grail of skincare. And the best part is the razor kit is only nine bucks and comes with two blade heads, a magnetic hook for your shower storage, and your choice of handle color. That's my favorite thing about this whole company is the fact that they have a magnetic hook for your shower. It's so nice. It stays on there really well. It doesn't leave gross soapy residue. And yeah, you never have to worry about your razor just sitting in a puddle of cold, nasty water and rusting up ever again because it sits nice and easy on the shower wall. Personally, my favorite color is blue. Uh, So I have a blue razor. I love it. It's very pretty. And you'll never have to worry about running out of refills or being stuck with dull, overused razors. You can choose how often replacement blades are sent to you with free shipping. That means fresh, ready-to-use razors always arrive right when you need them. So show your skin you care with the Athena Club Razor Kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code SESH. That's Athena, A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B.com with promo code SESH for 20% off today. We need to talk about Brittany because she let off a spicy Instagram post. This shit was hilarious. I fucking love it. Ah, made me so happy. And the conservatorship might be over even sooner than we expected. So Jamie Spears, her father, was suspended as a conservator in September, as we all know. And there um, was a scheduled hearing on November 12th to terminate the conservatorship. Obviously, November 12th hasn't happened yet. But on November 1st, Jamie filed court documents saying he supports Britney's desire to immediately terminate the conservatorship. In the papers, he says, quote, Jamie, well, I guess not he, but the papers say, quote, Jamie unconditionally loves and supports his daughter. As he has done for her entire life, Jamie will do everything he can to protect and care for her. For the last 13 years, that included serving as her conservator. Now it means ending her conservatorship. So it is said in no uncertain terms, Jamie believes that conservatorship should end immediately. And then Jamie will not seek to continue to serve as conservator. So goodbye, motherfucker. Good riddance. It also uh, continues that by saying that Jamie has always had Britney's best interests at heart and he supports a full and transparent examination of the conservatorship. I'm like, bitch, you haven't had anything your best interest at heart except for your wallet's best interest. (laughs) Stupid. Uh, It goes on to say that, in quote, it will put all of the outlandish and irresponsible speculations to rest. 
And he also stands by the belief that Britney, uh, 13 years ago, her life was in shambles and the conservatorship was necessary. That's why he's saying like, oh, but it was, you know, I, this had to be done because so many years ago she was going through all these terrible things, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, the conservatorship was totally necessary. We had to have it trying all to I do hear, some damage control. All I hear is excuses. Yeah. All I hear is the cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, literally. <laughs> ah, okay. But then this is literally the best part, you guys. So Britney made an Instagram post uh, not long ago, calling out Lynn Spears, who is her mom, and Lou Taylor, who is her former manager. Um, and she claims that they were actually the masterminds of this whole thing. I feel like for the most part, this whole time, the fingers have been pointed at Jamie Spears um, being the mastermind. But according to Brittany, it's her mom who's the one that came up with this idea. That is insane to me. Her own mother her own mother. And you know what's so sad is that when you're, especially because she was, you know, so young when she got into this industry, that you would think when you see your kid going through a difficult time that you would step up as the mother to, to help them. Right. And instead, she's totally using her taking that, using it to her advantage to make more money. And it is the most sick thing in the world. Oh, it makes me so fucking angry. So anyways, um, Bernie posted a picture on Instagram. Just, it has the words, the most dangerous animal in the world is a silent smiling woman. And her caption read, the moment I smile and I realize I have it in a very long time. My mom gets so concerned and says, you're acting weird. What's wrong with you? I say, Hi, my name is Britney Spears. Nice to finally meet you. Before I go any further, forgive me in advance. It's been 13 years and I'm a little rusty. It was a family business before and it's no longer that anymore. I was born today because I got to smile. So thank you for exiting out of my life and finally allowing me to live mine. P.S. Do I get P.S.S.S.S.S. <laughs> Do I know how mean I sound? Yes. 100 billion percent. I do. <laughs> Which I love that. She's like, I don't give a fuck. And then she goes, P.S.S.S.S. My dad may have started the conservatorship 13 years ago. But what people don't know is that my mom is the one who gave him the idea. I will never get those years back. She secretly ruined my life. And yes, I will call her and Lou Taylor out on it. So take your whole quote, I have no idea what's going on attitude and go fuck yourself. Hell yeah, Brittany. Yes, Brittany. She says, you know exactly what you did. My dad is not smart enough to ever think of a conservatorship. But tonight I will smile knowing I have a new life ahead of me. Oh, that is so heartwarming. Boom. Ah, I'm so glad that she finally made that post. Like, oh my that God. Is and I just love how she's like low key trolling them. Like, mm, you're not a, you're not smart enough to think of this. I know. I, I love that. I love that. She calls out her dad like that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But oh. yeah, her mom was behind it all. And Lou Taylor, don't forget. And Lou Taylor, yes, of course, of course. But that's one thing as like a manager, but like your own fucking flesh and blood, yeah. really? I mean, now that kind of makes sense because even more recently, her mom was like pretending to care, you know what I mean? Yeah, and being like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then like, I don't know. It's just so, it, it really does connect all the dots and like it really does, it completes the big picture, you know yep. what I mean? Like it's incredible seeing her talking like this because mm -hmm. she's been holding this back for 13 fucking years. Maybe now she'll be, she'll be able to see her kids. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Like maybe now she'll be able, she'll, now she will be able to go to whatever fucking vacation right. she wants and deserves. Right. And like, it's just- And maybe have a kid because she was maybe talking have about a kid, she yeah. Or fuck, have her own rights to her reproductive health. Oh, that pisses me off so bad. The fact that they were not allowing her to, maro to remove her morena is so fucking maddening to me. How how is that legal? Like how I is don't that understand. legal? Like literally, because how is they that? had control over her, for her medic. She was under conservatorship. They had control over every aspect of her life. I'm her medical de decisions, everything. I'm interested to see like how this will change conservatorship laws because I'm I'm I have a feeling that Brittany is going to be like an advocate for conservatorships now, like yeah. especially in California because California's laws are kind of weird. They have like a lot of like redundant and very yeah, like weird weird laws. I mean, mm -hmm. every state does, but like. California, especially like it being as as famous as it is and having as many famous people right. as it has, at the end of the day, it all comes back around to money. Yeah. And um, everything does, right? Isn't that what makes the world uh -huh. go around is money? 
Oh, God. The fact that she was just exploited for so long. The fact that she had to go to therapy in a place that is so public and she, she would have paparazzi waiting outside of her office after she got out of therapy and crying and they're snapping pictures of her. I'd be like, oh, Britney Spears is not doing well. And like her go in her performing when she has 104 fucking fever and like performing her ass off. I know. And not getting and, pay, and paying for these people, these abusive people. Literally paying She's their putting entire money salaries. in their pocket. I love that she, she's a Sagittarius. Because, she is? Yeah. And Aww. I totally feel that Sagittarius energy. Like she's That's, so fucking tough. She is. She's so like... Like she can't be like, they can't fucking bring her down. No. And like, that's just her own strong will. Oh, and that's so amazing. Awesome. And it's so, it's so like inspiring to see because she was in honestly, like probably like the worst position any celebrity has been in Latin our yeah. era. And like, as far as we know as well. Um, but like Britney was a, she's a pioneer for music and she, Oh yeah. It's so influential. And like, she's what we need. And like, now yes. we can finally see her as Britney Spears Cause she like I like like she said she's like born again and like this is like yeah. her new life and so cool. Oh, it really makes me so happy. I'm so excited to see what she will do with this newfound freedom and you know whatever she decides to do, whether that's you know get get going on other people's cases and try to be a speaker and a voice for people who don't have one. Or, or if she just wants to lay low and live her life on the beach somewhere, like she deserves to do whatever she wants to do. Yeah, she deserves it 110%. And, and the fact that she has that opportunity now is just so wonderful. I, I really could not be happier for her. But it does make me think about all the other um, people in Hollywood. It just, it just people in general that are under conservatorships um, that don't have any say and that don't have the power. You know, she in some way is really lucky that she is Britney Spears because so many people rallied around her because she's Britney so Spears. famous. Yeah. yeah. Cause she's Britney Spears. Um, that I think a lot of the reason why this is happening and why this is all breaking open is because of the fact that she has so many public, so much public support. Oh yeah. A lot of you guys have, um, told us about like Amanda Bynes and stuff who is in a conservatorship mm -hmm. and people are like, she's next as in the sense of like, we need to go after her conservatorship next. And I really hope that this is kind of a wake up call for people and that some of these people who are abusing their conservatorship powers are kind of shaking in their boots of like, Oh God, we got to figure this out because mm -hmm. it's just sad how many people are controlled, but it is so wonderful that she is free again, or at least on her way to freedom. So anyways, you guys, uh, we'll keep you updated, obviously, if more news breaks with Brittany. Uh, one day we would love to get some type of lawyer on the show um, to be able to kind of explain this to us further and like really dive deep into us. Um, Emily Baker is wonderful. I watch her on YouTube all the time and I know that her and Kendall are kind of like online friends. So it'd be really cool if someday, someday we could like somehow talk to her. But for now, we will leave it at that. Uh, hopefully this was entertaining to you still, even though... My lovely co-host wasn't here. Well, Charlie, you're still lovely. He's Aww. literally <laughs> crying at me right now. Okay, Beesh. Uh, we got to wrap it up. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and Corelli this week. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And we will see you on the next sesh. Oh, and don't forget to vote for my dog. Or dogs, okay? <laughs> the link will be below. Vote for my dogs. And we will see you on the next sesh. But until then, keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.